Lives will be changed this week, and AT&T Stadium will be the backdrop for those big moments. But who will be there? That is decided right here. It's been a mecca for Western sports since 1908, and now Cowtown Coliseum will be the vessel to a possible $2.1 million payday for these rodeo athletes. You know, when the American came to the game, they were doing something that's never been done. They were reinventing this Western sport of rodeo. Here we go. Yeah. All I know is I've got to run at the barrier and be three if I want to win $2 million, and that's the only reason why I'm here. It's not bad for the Sunday jackpot, I guarantee it. She's just so excited to be in this position. She's just loving it, for sure. You just got to take it one horse at a time and do your best on each horse you get on, and hopefully it all works out. She knows all about roping. Wow. It's so nerve-wracking to watch them and want them to do so good. The biggest one is the one you would like to do best at. <laughs> It's the ninth edition of the American Rodeo, but the first time, two million plus is up for grabs. Now, night number one of the semifinals in the books, but that round continues tonight with a new field of athletes hoping to move that leaderboard. Welcome inside Cowtown Coliseum. We're glad to have you here. Rodeo is glad that you're here alongside two-time PBR world champ, Justin McBride, five-time steer wrestling champ, Luke Branquino. I'm Kate Harrison, and if night number one inside this building told us anything, it's that these athletes came to play. No doubt about it, Kate. And look, I think this is the best field of contenders we've ever seen since the beginning of the American. So the field is really tough. And look, we promised some fireworks in the bull riding last night. It delivered. Look for even bigger things tonight because there's some great field up. Yeah, and we've seen in the steer wrestling, Jacob Ever threw his steer fast. And he said in his interview, he doesn't care about anything. And he, he just going at one at a time. He's going to go get that two million. He won the world championship over in Arlington. So if he makes it back to 18, T Center, which is in Arlington, we're going to see a chance of that man winning two million bucks. And that golden question, will those scores and times that we saw Tuesday night hold up? Well, these four names might have something to say about that. Yeah, right here, Speed Williams. I mean, what can we say about him? He's multi-time world champion, revolutionized team rope, but these young kids learned how to reach. They learned how to reach from that man right there. Caleb Driggers, world champion last year. A lot of uh, Speed Williams looking at Hunter Heron, 2016 American champ. He won 100,000 that year. This year, he's trying to hunt down for that 2.1 million at AT&T Stadium. And this is what I'm talking about with these contenders, guys. Leighton Berry, this guy, is chomping at the bit to get his American started, get back healthy. And then Jose Vitor Living. This might be the bull, best bull rider we have ever seen because of rides like this. Still in his second world title on the Great Bull Wupon, 98 and three quarters, highest score we've ever seen in the PBR. Here's another 90 point ride from him just a week ago. It's strange for me to call this guy a contender because he's one of the best bull riders I've ever seen. Yeah, and Madison Uthier, we're going to see right here, you know, she was built to be a cowgirl. Her dad, a world-class bronc rider, her mom, Christy, world-class polo player. We're going to see her get it on tonight, have a chance of that bunny. And Uthier was just 16 years old when she won that $100,000 paycheck. And the breakaway roping phenom is standing by with the fourth member of our broadcast team, Anthony Lucia. That's right, at 16 years old, she made history as the first ever breakaway roping champion. But before that, you had a different life in New York City as an actress in commercials and movies and all these different things. Did you learn anything from that way of life that has now transferred into the rodeo way of life? Oh, for sure. You know, I believe it's been a huge asset just being able to speak to people better and speak on the stage now that Breakaway has been in the forefront of so many new opportunities. I've been, you know, very fortunate in some great opportunities speaking at Texas High School State Finals, speaking after winning the American, and I just believe it's really helped me be a good spokesperson for the sport as well. Well, absolutely. You are a great spokesperson, but have you ever thought of yourself as an inspiration? Because Yesterday, I talked to Caden Crawford, who is right now moving on to that Friday night performance. But I asked her, I said, who's your inspiration? She said, yes, my mom, Jackie, her dad, Charlie. But she also listed you because you paved the way and showed young breakaway ropers just like her that she could. Oh, that's just, you know, that means so much to me. And I never would have seen myself in this position to be, you know, as somebody's inspiration or role model. But it just, you know, makes me want to strive to be better each day. And, 
you know, do better as a person and be a better spokesperson for the sport in general. So it's just, it means the world to me. You've roped for $100,000. You've won the $100,000. You've been inside of AT&T Stadium. You've been successful. But $2 million is a whole nother playing field. Where are you going to find the confidence and the courage to just go do your job? You know, I've been really um, fortunate here. I've made it to the American every year. They've had the breakaway the past three years. So I feel like that confidence will roll over each year. And I've gotten really comfortable in these pressurable situations, been able to compose myself well. And so I hope it carries over this year as well. In 2022, can Madison Uthier be a two-time American champ? We'll find out. As the lights come on inside Cowtown Coliseum, the rodeo athletes are ready to get down to business, and this guy's done it before in Hunter Heron as we go to the tie-down roping. Yeah, the 2016 American champion. He's many-time qualifier to the national finals, and that gold buckle has just escaped him. But look out, Hunter Heron's on a mission. The semifinals has already started, so the bar has been set. These athletes ready to make a move. It is a tie down roping brought to you by Preferred as we get set with Garrett Jacobs wasting no time here. A couple swings out, looking good so far. Yeah, a great start right there. But you see him get down the rope and miss flank him. Still a, you know, nine flat, decent run, but he could have sped that up quite a bit if he got his flank right. 9.01 for Jacobs. He's been to the American before, advanced to the top eight, hasn't made it to the shootout round. Yeah, and you can see right there, he kind of runs past that calf just a little bit, stays up a little too high, needs to get under there and get him lifted over him, but you know, we'll see how it holds up right now. It is a three-head aggregate. This is the last of the three that they're roping here in the semifinal. So with that, it slots Jacobs into the number three spot. Remember, you gotta be the top six to make it back to the contender round. Luke Potter, rookie of the year in 2020, young gun making waves. Yeah, and this kid can get it on. I watched him rope the extras at the national finals a couple years ago. Really handles his rope well. Calf's kicking just a little bit. But right there, that's he's taking a chance right there, Justin. Yeah, things, things were just kind of laid up there. It was straining, like you said, but I love how sharp he ropes, how crisp, crisp all of that is. And you call this Calf's wanting to strain on him. He just piles him up there and goes on with it. Keeps moving forward. Yeah, and you have to see how he controls his rope right there. Two hands on the slack, gets that calf turned around. But those calves are on their feet. That's one less step of having to get them up to flank them. 8.75 for Potter. That right now on three. Have to. 26 41. That puts him in that sixth spot. He right at the cut line. That's not a spot you want to wait as you see guys like Matt Shazawa come up next. Three time American finals qualifier. Yeah, you, Matt came in. He missed the barrier there, but he came in. He's down a ways. 36 coming in. So. Obviously, he was going to have to roll at it to be fast. And, you know, I just don't see Matt advancing or even coming close right here. Well, you talk about him being long coming in already and then not very fast today for what they're needing to be. And yeah, that's that's probably not going to advance. You know, you talk about living to fight another day. These guys coming in at the bottom, they got to let it roll. They have to run at the barrier, get that rope out of their hands and be as fast as they can. It was 11.02 for Shizawa, but already outside of that top six. Zach Youngblood, though, 23 years old. He's made moves before in the tie down roping. What better time than to be inside Cowtown knowing 2.1 million is just about four days away. And this kid comes from a great family. His uncle Jeff Corbello, Joey Roberts, all both national finals qualifiers. And this kid can steer wrestle too, but kind of sloppy loop on that calf's neck. Got him flanked. Get him tied up there, Zach. Has to be faster than an 899 to go to the top of the leaderboard, just like that. 8.56. Move over, Trevor Hill. It's Zach Youngblood taking that top spot in the aggregate right now. And a good run, like I said, that loop kind of went on there, kind of big, but he handled his slack well, kept that calf on his feet, and then watch his tie, flawless right there, Justin. Yeah, and, and Luke, these calves seem a little bit bigger to me than, than what we've seen throughout the history of the Americans. Does it feel like that to you this year? Yeah, it does, but these guys are handling it, and especially tonight. Last night, I didn't feel like they got it started as good, but these guys are rolling at it tonight. Let's head down to Anthony as we get set for Wyatt Imus. Yeah, Wyatt Imus is one of those up and comers. This is a young man who has had a lot of opportunities, learned from the best. Joe Beaver was his mentor, eight-time world champion in the World of Pro Rodeo. And when it comes down to it, Wyatt Imus 
It has zero fear, as you're seeing throughout this run. But sometimes, Luke, that speed can get you into a jam. Yeah, and it, it does right there. Got a great start, but see that loop big kind of hits that calf. He doesn't get that calf spun around real good. When he's getting down the rope, that calf meets him halfway up there. And like we talked, Justin, those are big calves. You don't want to be having them meet you halfway up the rope. I miss not going to be happy with that one. 972, he's already outside of that top six. You know, we talk about how crisp, you know, uh, Zach handled his slack. Wyatt, not as crisp right there. That calf didn't hit in the rope and turn and face. That's what we see happen right there. Talk about a guy looking for revenge. To Weldon Watson, he was in the American semifinals in 2021, finished ninth. Didn't get to advance, but he's been close before. He can taste it. He wants it. Can he win it? Well, we'll see right here. He's coming in, I believe, 24th. So he's going to have to get it on right here. Missed the barrier a little bit. Cash trying. Got a not kind of a roll fall right there. Again, you got to get him up off the ground. That's just time clock kicking and then, you know, gets in a speed jam. And then you know it, right? You know you're behind, and, and so you got to try and make it up, and then you see the little mistakes start to kick in then. Yeah, and you know, he's disappointed. He was so close last year and then this year. Knew, no, knew he had a chance and just let it slip through his fingers. 11 and 66. He'll have to wait and see if 2023 is going to be the magic year to go for the million. Bobbles there, too. It's one of those runs where, man, you just want to see it get cleaned up, but all the way through the end. He did finish, but didn't finish high enough. You saw young blood go. He's at the top of the leaderboard. Hale came back twice in the semifinals, and both runs paid off for him, sitting in that second and third spot. Cooper Martin hoping to have to say something about that. Oh. That's something you don't see out of Cooper Martin very often, Justin. No. no, and that's a guy that I was really looking forward to watching. He rides a great horse. He's a really good hand and back healthy now and can't skip any steps, so you got to get him caught before any of it matters. That's it. Right there, he gets pulled up and just missed his mark right there. You don't, like I said, you don't see Cooper do that very often. That calf got out in front of him. His horse was starting to stop and just hit him behind the head. Martin. Doesn't make it happen. Three time in for a qualifier gets that no time. Chase Webster trying to make the American Finals both the team roping and the tie down roping. Watch out for Webster right here. 18 years old, guys. The nerves, though, you can't see it on his face as he gets back to the box. You know, and we talked about it like 23rd coming in on the two head average right now, or aggregate, I should say. He's going to have to get the start, get it on. These calves, to me, compared to last night, they look a little more even. You take the start, you kind of gauge what yours is going to do come from the other ones, and this kid can get it on right here. He's going to have to be fast. Well, he, he took a cut at him. Took a tip from Berenquino up here. Fastest we've seen is 8.22. Ah, gets in a bit of a bobble right there. Finishes with a couple wraps. It was going to be a 9.99, but that barrier is going to cost him 10, 19 and 99. But look, when you're 18, I, I, I can remember going to my first PBR when I was 18 and being way overmatched and not realizing it. You know what I mean? Like, this kid didn't care. He's going for it, man. Well, yeah, you talk about breaking the barrier and missing the barrier. There's not a whole lot of difference. You're trying to win first to me more if you're trying to run at the barrier. You don't, you safety up, you miss it. Right there, that kid rope sharp and handled his slack good. Chance Thiessen coming in with a huge opportunity here. All he has to do, guys, is be a 9.42 to go to the top of the leaderboard. Attempting to make his first American Finals. We talked about Webster being just 18 years old. Here's Thiessen now, 19 years old. Yeah, and I've, I've known this kid all his life. I know his family really well, and he's been working at this literally since he was five years old. What a start. The flank, if it could be clean here, quick hands. Thiessen does it. That was a great run right there by Chance. It started with the barrier. Got it wrapped around his horse's chest, got out. But what I liked here is we're going to see. Watch that barrier, hit his horse's chest, but watch him patient in that stirrup. Ropes his slack, sits there, lets his horse get underneath him, gets to that calf, clean flank right there, and then very smooth on the ground. One wrap and a hooey. Little bobble right there. Yeah, that was I, a great run. That's what I was just going to say. That That's not even seeing the best of him yet. 8.65, Thiessen moves to the top of the leaderboard. Let's send it to Anthony. 
You might recognize this horse from last night because Bo Cooper, this is his steed. Bo Cooper, fellow Canadian of this man, Logan Bird. You see the accolades that he has. Logan is well known for his top horsepower. We've seen Shane Hanchy, Weston Hughes ride, but Logan flew, flew in from Canada, mounted on his good friend's bows. And if you think about it, Bo Cooper is number six right now. He could be using and borrowing his horse to the guy that moves him outside of that top six. However, this calf that he has drawn has been missed twice. The fastest they have been on this calf is nine seconds flat. And you can look at the board and you know that he is going to have to be way faster than that in order if he wants to punch his ticket to Friday. But Logan Bird has got everything he needs to be able to do something big. There's the nod. Bird, that calf giving him a bit of a tough time here. And now oh, you're I'll seeing why he has only been caught twice in two actual, or excuse me, one time on this animal because that was the wildebeest of the calves that we're going to see tonight. Plus yeah. a barrier on that one, 25 and 28. Bird's not going to be taking this one to the bank. No, and a tough draw right there, like Anthony said. As soon as that calf spins around, you know, his horse might have could have got back a little more, but that calf was running up the rope at him, got between the legs, and when you get in that situation, you just try to survive the wreck. Well, just two to go as we wrap up night number two in the semifinals at the tie-down roping. Stetson Vest has been to the NFR before. That year, 2013, and a 15th in the world standings. Vest, can he be victorious tonight when it matters most? Backing in the box, hoping to punch that ticket to the contender round on Friday night. Here's a nod. Great start right there. Patient in that stirrup. Cap didn't just pop around though, so it's gonna take Stetson some time to get him up. Wrapping a hooey. I don't know if it's gonna be fast enough, but Stetson did about all he could do other than that calf rolling on the ground. It's not, it's just out 8.9, not only seventh in the round, but what matters is the aggregate, and it puts him seventh on the leaderboard, our cut line sitting at six. And that's the difference right there, right, Luke? Yeah. Having to get him up. Yeah, and you know, if Stetson could have popped that calf around, kept him on his feet, you know, the clock's ticking, and when they're on their side, you have to get them up, they call it clearing them to get them flanked and tied. Can experience translate to exclamation points? Hunter Heron, five-time American qualifier, 11-time NFR qualifier. All he needs, guys, a 9 and 13 to move to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, coming in first on the two-head aggregate is huge right here for Hunter. And an experienced guy like he is, the calf leaves sharp, got it on him right there. See that calf kind of charge and hit him right there. Hunter didn't panic. Now he just needs to tie. Oh, bobbled it right there. Oh, nine and seven, one. Now here's the deal. Tenth in the round, but round doesn't matter. It's all about that overall. So that'll get him setting third right now. We're taking six back to the contender round. Third, are you comfortable there? Yeah, you know, you got what, 12 tomorrow night? Right. And with the trades, we, we're not knowing where everybody fell in that aggregate race coming into it. So I'm gonna say he's gonna be safe, but I guarantee you he's gonna be sweating it because he wants that one back. Hunter Heron will have to wait and see. Will he get to continue for that two million? Well, the champs coming into the Coliseum, they know how to rise and win. Will those world titles result in a ticket to that two million dollar day? We're about to find out. Stay with us, much more to come. Night number two of the semifinals right here inside the historic Cowtown Coliseum at the Fort Worth Stockyards. Welcome back to the Cowtown Coliseum, taking you through night number two of the semifinals right here at the American Rodeo. The fans are ready to watch some bareback riding presented by JCB. We're back to the rough stock, McBride. I know you're about to get pumped. Well, we got a great field too, Luke. I mean, we've got guys that have won the American before. We've got several guys been to the national finals before. And then we got a great set of horses going to start it off with high heels from Frontier Rodeo. Anytime you got a Frontier horse, you got a shot. Joe Schlegel hopes to be singing after this one. <laughs> Saw the clock stop right there, 5.07. I'm going malfunction. Yeah, he didn't hit him with a free hand right there, did he? Not that I said. I, I thought he just made a really good ride. And on a good horse, I believe Casey Fields, 87 on him and a half at the national finals last year. So. At the NFR, and 
He makes a good ride right there. I yeah, we're being told it is a qualified yeah. ride. So 79 points for Schlegel. That slots him number eight overall. Jacob Rain. What He's bearing down and trying, you know. Uh, you know, Justin, I thought we'd seen that horse weaken a little bit at the end on his kick, but, but. You take into consideration the Cowboy not, not giving him his best shot, right? Right. Well, you see right here, good spur out, good start, but then his feet drop. This horse, you're wanting to stay under that rig, and you want to stay under that handle, feet up in their neck, firing at them. And, and when your feet drop and, you, and you, you, your hips get rolled out, it gives that horse a chance to take off a little bit. Rain 82 and a half and all the rough stock events. It's the top 12 who are coming back for the first horse. of the semifinals. So right now, Rain is sitting second overall, looking good as we move now to Trey Taylor. Taylor takes a hit with that one. Yeah, and that's that's big league, and, and that is a big league horse right there. That's. That's a professional animal right there. Big, strong, snappy, jumping kick. You see, Gun tries to go two hands down, double grabs. Still can't make it to the pickup, man. Well, right now it's going to take a 75 and a half to get into the top 12. That is the marker for everyone right here in the rough stock to get back to Thursday night to have one more before the contender round. Leighton Berry. Tanner Ross right here, Kate, we moved to. Really good little horse of Andrews, Rowell out. That's what, that's what Tanner Ross does every time. This guy has won the American before, been to the NFR a lot, and now we're getting to see this guy as a contender. And watching his ride, you know, compared and the other horses, I didn't feel like this horse was as much as those other horses, so I'm worried if it's gonna be enough for him to move on. Well, and, and that's, the, that's the predicament you get into, right? And you're just hoping with a guy as good as Tanner that he's able to max out one that's this nice. I was just going to tell you that Barry has to wait and watch what Tanner Offs is able to do. 81 points for the five-time American qualifier, six-time NFR qualifier. That right now in the number five spot overall. Oren Larson, what a resume he's been able to put together here at 30 years old. Yeah, I mean, you see it there on the screen. He is the 19 reserve champion. Uh, Second in 18, wins it in 19, but this guy can flat out ride, and he is no joke. And he's a big, tall guy, too, to get up underneath that rig and get his feet moving as fast as he does. That's impressive. You know what impresses me? Yeah, he is a little lankier than a lot of the bareback riders you see, but this guy's toughness. I've seen him ride through the NFR through some major injuries that most guys would have said, you know what, I'll be back next year, not this guy. He is a guy who loves this format, and rightfully so. It seems to pay him well, as we just saw. Six times to the Americans, seven times to the NFR. Look out for Larson. Wiggle worm of Porco's here. Sometimes it's it's tough for a horse to get circled. Orn gets this one picked up. Circles tight. Good ride. You know, we see at the bottom of the screen, average score for the horse was 38.9, you know, 39 points. Oren's going to be more than the horse on, on this score, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. But Lauren helps this horse out, helps him get started, and then just a great finish. Mark this horse 41, 43, Oren a couple points over him. That's a great job. Larson leaves nothing on the table. 84 points puts him in that number one spot on the leaderboard. Larson, he's saying, I'm coming back for my seventh American and looking good so far. Spreading himself out from the field right now. Lamer sitting down there in 82. You got to have a 78 and a half to get in the top 12 right now. Wyatt Denny has scored above that many times in his career. Just a fast, snappy little hopper right here. Wyatt Denny, I mean, this is this is where like, okay, so they marked the last horse of 41. Where are they gonna mark this horse? Because you're gonna have to mark Wyatt Overy. He's ahead of everything right here and, and just makes a, a flawless ride, really. You know, it seems like these horses really fit Wyatt. He can get those legs moving, get those spurs down and back up to the rig and handle pretty fast. Denny does just what he needs to. 81 and a half. That's going to put him in the number five spot overall. Again, top 12 is where you gotta be. Denny does it here. Three, 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 three. 
And with every ride we're seeing, that cut line is moving up. 79 so far. The scores tonight across the field seem to be better. Is that the horsepower? Is that the talent aboard the horse or what is causing that? I think a little bit of both, but I'm going to say the guys on the horses. And, and like this one right here, Dusty Diamond of Andrews, it's a really good horse that'll stay stay close right here in front of the chutes. And that's what you're looking for, something that'll stack up and give you a chance to zing them off your rigging handle. Spurlacoss one time to the American before. Lacoste loses just a touch of control right at the end. I think he's down before the whistle right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you're right, Kate. But this, you know, this one's coming from about right here on. Wow, right there, he sets him up. You see his feet drop. Now the horse is taking control. Now you're catching all the power. And believe me, there is a lot of power right there. Lacoste doesn't like that one. It's Larson who's sitting at the top of the leaderboard. 84 is what everyone's got their eyes on here. I'm looking forward to this guy, Kate Sam Peterson. This is a young hot shot right here, been lighting it up. Just 18. A year ago, he was at the National High School Finals as your all-around champion. A year later, he's trying to punch his ticket for $2 million, and rides like that can help him do so. Peterson puts that one away for eight. And a great horse right there, double cross. They've ridden that horse four times, 80-plus on him four straight times. Check this out. Peterson on top with that one, 84 and a half. The young gun said, I'm coming. 18 years old. For my $2 million. Yeah. 18 years old, but look, this is what Casey Phil, Tim O'Connell, these great guys have done. They've made these kids get really good really fast. Senior in high school, Helena High School in Montana. That is impressive for an 18 year old right there. Peterson sitting happy as we go to Chance Ames. Aboard Redemption. Another one circling, you see his feet dropping. He's, he's trying to get there. And you can see some of these great bareback riders. When those horses circle, they stay up under the rigging, and their feet are almost, well, they are unison. Down, up, down, up. We can see right here, Chance gets out of place, out of position, and he loses a lot of his control, and the power gets him right here. Yeah, and, and look, you gotta stay even, right? Because they're judging both sides, and when you get uneven with one, you'll be higher on that side than the other, and it's, it reflects in your score. For Ames, that 71 is 19th overall, so he's not gonna make it back for that important Thursday night round and rough stuff. R.C. Landingham, you see it, fourth in the American 2016. He knows how to get all the way to the short go, but it all starts right here for Landingham. Uh, this horse that gets into the wall has to come off of it. It's kind of just weird getting to it anyways, kind of hopping and skipping, staying low to the ground, not really giving R.C. any kind of chance at all. And since you said not giving him a chance, I mean, if you're a judge, would you consider a re-ride option right there? Oh, if I'm judging? <laughs> you ain't kidding, I would. Well, we'll see what the judges have to say. R.C. last fall made the national finals pretty much in the month of September, and he was hot that month. Landingham tried to let her rip. Creamy wasn't having the same. That 79 puts him just outside the top 12 in that 13th spot. <laughs> and he saved the cameraman, too. Told him, hey, there's a horse coming around here. <laughs> the young gun and the veteran in your top two spots so far in the bareback riding. Leighton Berry at 23 years old looking for his first trip to the American. Oh, oh, oh. oh, and for three, it looked like he was going. Yeah, in, in Dixie's grave here, this is one that hey, 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 is known hey, to get hey. a little bit wild and did not disappoint right there. Boy, he did it late. Barry, talk about a comeback story last year. Got hurt at Odessa in the winter. Came back at Dodge City one second, I believe, right behind Cole Franks and was getting after it. If he had another month of rodeo, he makes the finals. And unfortunately right here, he just had some trouble. Yeah, it hits over his neck. Turn back. Woo, that's a bucking horse. Well, for Barry, that one not going his way. 
but it did go the way for the veteran. He's been to the big stage before. He knows how to do it. Oren Larson, 84 points, setting number two. He's standing by with Anthony. Oren, the opportunity of the American is huge. Last year, your season ended up good. You made the national finals rodeo, but you finished just outside that top 10. But with the opportunities that this event has to offer, sometimes a little bad luck turns out to be good luck. Absolutely, it's uh, definitely a blessing in disguise. I was uh, kind of disappointed with my performance at the NFR, but it just meant a great opportunity to come here. You know what it's like to perform inside of AT&T Stadium. You've been a past winner. You've placed on multiple occasions. But when it's $2 million, 2.1 to be exact, does the game plan change any? Not at all. It's uh, for spurring bucking horses, it's not rocket science. Even though he's Canadian, the, possibly the nicest guy in professional rodeo, when it comes to riding bucking horses, he's a fierce beast. Back to you guys. Larson leaves it all on the line with this run. 84 points, sitting number two. This is one of those real deal contenders we were talking about at the cake, or at the top cake. Larson means business. $2.1 million up for grabs for these contenders at the ninth edition of the American Rodeo. Mike Trout takes him 9.1 games to earn that much. And what about Steph Curry? 3.75 games to go home with 2.1. And you know him, Patrick Mahomes plays for 48 minutes. Well, what about these rodeo athletes right here? Less than 30 seconds, their lives can change. Less than 30 seconds until they could be holding a check for $2.1 million. But to do that, you got to compete. You got to succeed right here inside the historic Cowtown Coliseum as we move on to Justin Sport. Just kidding. Luke Sports, the steer wrestling. Hey, don't think me and Big Luke ain't thrown something down We're together before. Presented by Durango Boots. We need to see that. Yeah, you got Wynn Shack right here, qualified for the American last year. Great run right there from Wynn. You know, this Cowboy's tough, Badland Circuit kid, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think he left a little early. You know, you can see him drop his hand right there. Steer didn't quite go as sharp as he thought. For Shaq, that would have, at 3.86, slid him into the number two spot, but with that speeding ticket, ticket rather, 13 and 86, that does put him out of it. And a great run. I mean, he caught that steer a little high, but rolled back over. And you see the pigtail fall right there. I don't care where you're at. That's 10 second penalty. And we learned quickly from round number one last night in the semifinals. Those penalties will not get you there. Well, for Shane Frey, what a time to be going for 2.1 million. Having the best season of his career, currently 19th in the world standings. Yeah, and third generation cowboy, his dad, bareback rider, his uncle, a you know, steer wrestler. Riding Dr. Pepper right here. Got over that steer's nose, hung the leg just a little bit, but he's coming in 11th. We'll see if that's gonna put him in a position where he has a chance to move on. And right now it does for Frey, 4.92. So overall in that three head aggregate, that's what matters. You gotta be in top six, sitting number four. You know, a tough field. You know, they said this pin of steers are supposed to be better than last night's, or I'm sorry, not as good as last night's. They're gonna try a little bit harder. Riley Duval gave me that information. And running, you know, in this building, you miss the barrier, you go to the back end. A lot of things can, you know, go bad. Mike McGinn, Jacob Edler, that's your one and two sitting at the top. Justin Kimsey hopes to have something to say about that. Kimsey, can he take it? He does. No, Luke, I think I think that info you got was spot on, too, because here we see a guy get a great start. Everything looks good and then has to slide him a little further. You can tell everything's just a little bit stronger. Yeah, and Kimsey's just so technically correct. Northwest Bulldogger. See that barrier hit that horse's chest. Great start, but this steer just wants to push, push. Doesn't want to snap around the corner. Kind of gets that slower fall out of him. 5.02 is not going to move from Kinsey on. Denver Roy backing into the box next. Let's go down to Anthony. Yeah, you guys have been talking about the steers are a bit tougher tonight. However, this one, they've been four seconds, two times, five second once, and they've been a no time on this steer. So if you talk to all the guys, and I'm sure Luke has, this is the pick of the pin for Denver Roy. And for Roy, if he is a 3.69 or better, he'll shoot straight to the top of the leaderboard. Is it doable on this one? Yes, it is. Riley Duval said this is probably the best steer in the herd. 
for tonight. He and Denver Bulldogs good. He's got his dad, world champion Mark, on the other side. Steer turned his head right as he nodded. I'm not sure he gets out of the barrier, but great run right there by Denver Roy. Either way, but unfortunately, I think he broke the barrier. And we talk about shoot procedure in the rough stock. It's no different in the time event. So steers have to be looking straight. Your horse has to be looking straight. You know, we're going to hopefully get to see it right here. Get and his it, horse set. Right, he did at 14-11 with that penalty. Yeah, he didn't actually turn his head that bad. Just kind of when he left, he left up and into the chute. Just, you know, paused just enough to let Denver get out or break the barrier. Roy will have to wait for next year. Just Morehouse doesn't want to wait any longer, but he must deliver. He was coming in from that two head aggregate 23rd spot. So a bit of time to make up for Morehouse. Yeah, and again, this is a tougher pin of steers, they say, a little bit stronger, leaves and runs. See if Justin get the start, missed the barrier right there. He's gonna hit sideways and try turning him back. Feet run on him, and anytime your feet run on you in these big cattle, it's hard to get any type of fall, and that's what we've seen happen right there for Justin. Morehouse had to be mistake-free to have a shot at moving on. 11 and 13 is not going to do it for Morehouse. Curtis Cassidy, a guy that's been to the American multiple times. He's been to the big show, the NFR, eight times. Been close to a chance at that million, hasn't got there, but this could be his time at 43. You know, it can be, and Curtis has always ridden great horses. He had Willie, he has this horse, Tyson, has won the horse of the year, I believe in 20 and 21. Has his brother, Cody, on the Hazen side. You know, that team, they're hard to beat in any situation, but when the pressure's on Curtis, he's even tougher. Well, and you talk about that team, Luke, and the trust that there's gotta be there. You're talking about two brothers that have done this together literally all their life. They have it, you know, and they feed off each other right here. Curtis behind the barrier a little bit, hits sideways, gets over, but doesn't get that nose, serious nose snapped out of there. You kind of see him get it in the palm of his hand. Gonna be a little too long right there. I'm not sure if that's gonna help move him on. Right now it is, but he's probably not going to sleep very well tonight. 5.07, that slides him into the number five spot overall. Again, in the steer wrestling, you gotta be top six on three to move on to that contender round on Friday night. You know, and Curtis still has a chance to make some money even if he doesn't move on because he has, I believe, Stephen Culley riding this horse who went on and won second or third at the American one year, so he still has a chance to make some money if he doesn't move on. Tyler Dick, it is time to deliver in a big way here. They're really looking at these times coming in on two. I mean, it's a matter of less than a second between who was number eight and who was number 25. So really, all the guys we're seeing today, I mean, you, you got to be in the threes to put yourself in a good spot. Yeah, you do, and Tyler gets a good start. He's coming off some money one at uh, Tucson. That steer comes by, kind of sticks his back leg a little bit, but, you know, kid has a lot of potential. He came to one of my steer wrestling clinics a long time ago, and the heart of a giant. Great start right there. Watch this steer right here. Kind of just pull on him down the corner. His feet kind of couldn't get underneath him. The steer just hangs just enough to cost him some time. Kyler Dick delivers with that one, 4.68. Right now, he is sitting just above the cut line. As we go now to Ryan Schuckberg, his older cousin, world champ Zeke Thurston, he's been on the big stage before, but of course in the rough stock. Don't know if he gave him any advice here, but it could be a family day if we get to contender night. It can, and Shuck to me, again, another Canadian Bulldogger, and Bulldog's as good as anybody. You know, if he can get his hands on him, we're gonna see him right there. See how technically correct oh. he was, Justin? He was over that steer's head, great head catch over it, feet in the perfect position, and got that nose hook deep and slam right there. Oh, man. Oh, Shuck Berg, he was going for it. He knew, we said, you gotta be in the threes. Would have been a 3.87. Really close. And yeah. He would have been sitting pretty, but unfortunately with that barrier, 13 and 87. But you know what, broke the barrier, but watch this run. That was as snappy as a run that we've seen all night, on, even yesterday. That was a great run right there by Shuck. Shuckberg going home, not the way he wants to. 24 years old, and just seeing what he was capable of there, though, without that barrier, there's a lot to come from him. 
there he is. You know, that guy's been impressed, impressed me the last couple of years. He stays on that horse, stays with the right group guys. He'll be at the national finals, and, you know, he's going to be a champion. Sterling Lee is going to be the next guy to go here. And with just a few left right now, Luke, you've seen so many barriers. Does that make you hesitate at all? You know, we, and just we've talked about this. It can't. It doesn't make me. You're in the situation to try to win first, especially right here. Sterling's coming in. You know, 22nd in the aggregate. No, you have to run at it. Give yourself a chance for that big money. And you were talking, Kate, about how close it is from being 24th to 5th or whatever. You know, it's it's separated by hundreds of a second. So, yeah, you got to push. I, I use Jacob. Jacob Edler's mentality. I don't care what the steer is. Just go throw him down as fast as you can. Sterling yeah. Lee lays one down here, 4.96. You know, and a great run by Sterling. That steer did not have a lot of action. Riding Rio, a horse of Cameron Mormon. Cameron was on the other side, Hazen. But start right here. Good start. Watch him catch this steer's head. Stays over. But watch the steer just kind of die off around the corner. Didn't have any come by. You know, that good run, just not as good of a steer. And for Lee, that 4.96 in the aggregate put him number seven. So he's just on the outside looking in. Stephen Collins been to the American before. He's got to slam on the brakes to get him here. And he does it in a 4.9. You know, and we've seen that horse, Tyson, right there of Curtis Cassidy's again. Let Sterling or let uh, Stephen get his feet on the ground fast. Good start. Horse hit or hit the horse's chest with the barrier. But watch this steer. When he hooks his nose, that steer's horn gets by him. He had to keep hustling, get that nose pulled out, and get a flat fall. Well, and then there was one. Laramie Warren comes in in that 31st spot overall. 10 and 20 is what he's been so far. So he's got to make a move in a really big way, a, a low three to be set in a good spot. Yeah, you know, not a great steer. This year runs pretty hard. Laramie kind of gets hit out in front of him. Anytime you get hit out in front of a steer, even if they're really good on the ground, you kill that momentum off. You're, you're almost blocking them to come by you, and that's what happened right here. And see him miss Barry just a tick. Horse worked great. See how the steer kind of pulled his head down when Sterling hit him behind the horns. Killed off all his momentum and couldn't get him to come by. With that Warren 5.78, puts him 14 overall. We'll have to say goodbye to him until next year. But who is setting really well right now? Shane Frey, 19th in the world standings, best season of his career. He says, let's have it inside Cowtown Coliseum. Steer wrestling in the books, night number two. You feel the rush of the wind and then you hear the crowd and it's big and it's bright and you just got to count on your training. 61 years of age and here it comes Donna Kay oh, and Bell. Yes. I mean this oh, should be wow. really fast. There's nothing like the power pushing off going to barrel two. And then of course the run home is exciting too. Tight turns, fast times. That is what we're looking for in the barrel racing competition at the American Rodeo. Semifinals competition underway. Barrel racing brought to you by Polaris inside of Cowtown Coliseum. A smaller pattern, but every single one of these horses and riders that we've seen have earned their way to compete over the next couple nights, hopefully punching their ticket into that First performance of the American, McKenna Coronado, a young lady that knows what it's like to compete at the American. She did it five years ago, hopes to punch her ticket and get back into that spot for the $2 million. And if tonight is anything like we saw the first night in the semifinals, having top of the ground really pays off. And that's what Marn Lusnort is hoping for as she gets set here. Yeah, and we've seen it last night. Top of the ground, the times are fast, and they drug halfway through. And then those girls on the top of the ground again seem to be a little bit faster. Lou Snort, what a first barrel. Comes around so tight. That horse's ear is pinned, searching, hunting for that second as we go to the third. This is looking so good. Clean, sends him home across the line. But how fast will it be? 
13-7-3-7. You know, you know, we've seen the ground, top the ground fast. Anthony, how are the ground conditions looking down there? The ground conditions are looking great, and as you just saw, I mean, when you see a team that's been together for nine years like Marn has been with love and fame, that's an amazing 11-year-old mare. You see her ears pin back as she sees that finish line. She knows she did good. Luz Nort setting forth with that time. McKenna Coronado, Anthony highlighted her. Oh, that second one comes down. A penalty like that won't be fast enough to move on. Yeah, she got the first and the second as soon as she came in. It started off bad. Sometimes speed jams come in all the events. We talked about in the tie down. Luke talked about in the steer wrestling. And sometimes you are trying to cut those corners so much that you actually knock over barrel. What happens then? You're out of the money. 23.983, the time for Coronado. Brianna Lehrman is going to turn that around right here. Yeah, this is a team that I'm excited to watch, and this is actually their first time and first performance to run inside. This young lady and this amazing horse, BF, Wishbone oh. Red, and that's what happens sometimes when you are not completely with the horse. This team obviously had luck in the semifinals, but all the lights, all the sound, all the noise from the crowd and the audio, it plays a factor. Lerman, too, lost that left stirrup. You saw her looking down at that first barrel, and then from there, just seemed like that horse came up a little bit short going around each barrel. Yeah, and you could kind of see that coming in. You could see she was trying to hold him out, trying to hold him out, and then when she let him go into the barrel, shoulder drops, boom. Yeah, and this arena is not, you know, horse friendly. They come through that gate not knowing where the barrel is. 29-514 for Lehrman. Fonda Melby, her shot going first at the right, a little wide there, ah, hits it going out. Beautiful second though, she's just going to finish up this run, hope to stay clean on that third. A lot more down barrels we're seeing here, night number two, but we said it, they're, they're pushing it, they're going for that two million plus dollar paycheck. 18, seven, eight, six for Melby. Yeah, and they know the top 10 are what in advance on to Friday, so we'll have a field of 20 come Friday. Obviously, once they get there, it's a one header, so they're just trying to get to that spot. But again, we talked about you safety up, you're gonna be too long anyway. Taryn Boxleitner. Our next one to go here right now, because it's the top coming back on one more. Moat Santa to top, the fastest we've seen, a 13.577. Boxleitner wanted to have something to say about that. Took down that first coming out, takes down the third going in. 24.096 with those two down barrels. The fastest we've seen so far tonight was Marn Lusnord. Like we're saying coming in, it's not an aggregate like we saw in some of the timed events right here. They're putting it on the line. It's a clean slate. They know they have to be as fast as possible on one. And she's holding the spot, I believe. What is she, fourth right now? Yeah, Luce Nord is fourth. Let's send it to Anthony. Well, when you think about this field, and obviously every single one of these horses, they competed in this arena to get back. What happens with some of these animals? They are trying so hard to go so fast that corners are cut. We've seen that already in the first six competitors. Also, something that you might not know if you're sitting at home or maybe have never been to the Cowtown Coliseum is how close the barrels are to that fence. If you look at it to the naked eye, it looks like plenty of room. But when those horses are running full speed to go to turn that barrel, that fence is quickly approaching. And a lot of horses, especially, that haven't had a lot of experience in here will anticipate those turns. And that's why you're seeing those knocked barrels. You think small arenas, you think Thomas and Mack, then you get here and you realize it seems even smaller than that. And just like Anthony said, so close to those fences. They're pushing as hard as they can sometimes to get past those barrels. Yeah, okay. and, and you talk about that small pin and being in here multiple times in that anticipation. You see that in every, every kind of discipline that involves training a horse. You see it in the team roping, you see it in the cutting, the raining, whatever it is. Halen Lyde looks as smooth and calm and collected as could be. Goes around 313-904 for Lyde. You know, we talk about top of the ground. That's where, you know, Marna was top of the ground, first out. We'll see what her time is right here, but I don't know if it's going to be fast enough. 
That 13.904 right now sits her eighth overall. And what's so impressive about that talented rider and that horse is that horse is only five years old. But let's take a look at our next competitor, Kristen Hanchi. Watch this. Little Blue Roan horse is covering some ground right here. Comes off that second barrel and has never let up on the gas. Widens off of the third barrel is going to cost her valuable time, and the, and the time reflects it. The tight turns, straight lines. Kate, you know just as well as I do, that's the fastest point from one way to another. And with a 13.943, Hanchi just slides above that cut line. City number 11 right now hangs on, coming around the third, out just that touch wide. That could be very well the difference between sitting fifth and 11th. Well, Hanchi has to wait. Lake, Lake and Bice. Bice. There you go, I'll go. Lake and Bice is our next competitor that we're gonna see. And, and this is a young lady that this horse and this cowgirl teamed up one month ago. We will see if this newfound partnership is gonna be successful. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the result is the same. Second barrel goes down. And again, Justin, you pointed out it out perfectly. The more times any animal is in this building, the more they are going to anticipate those turns, the run, the stop, and even in the in the rough stock, you're going to see bucking horses react differently the more that they see this pin as well. Bice, 19.063 with that down barrel. Did he just say you did something perfect in barrel racing? Well, look I here. I think he did. Look here, Kate. I, I was did. talking with Haley Kinzel one time, and yep, I oh, know you go Haley. To the pro. Yeah. I know Haley. And, and seriously, though, like she doesn't run her horse around the barrels a lot. You know what I mean? Like she'll walk them. She'll just ride them outside like a using horse. Wiley Mitchell knocks that first but keeps it up close knocks even the second that one stays get past the third and now she's heading home what a run for mitchell can she make it 13 7 6 9 that is city number five right now a pass qualifier to the american five years ago wiley mitchell you're actually going to get to see that horse's three-quarter brother when her mom competes in just a little while. That was Smoky Gold Jack, and what a run. 11 years they've been a team, and it showed right there. Cody Ward, oh, gonna drag over the first. Gonna hit the second, might as well hit all three if you're gonna do it. Let's do it all the way. Nope. Sometimes you need to show the horse that there is a way around them. And another thing that I will point out is that third barrel, you're not gonna see that one knocked over near as much because there is a lot more room between the third barrel and that wall. So those horses are clearly going to feel way better about going past that third barrel and then making that turn back. The barrel racing from top to bottom, the athletes, the jockeys that we're watching are truly just spectacular teams because Mac, you know this, Luke, you know this from competing and Kate as well. Whenever you become in unison with the animal that you were on, that's truly whenever you can do some special things. Moments ago, you watched this young lady's daughter, Wiley, compete. Now you're going to get to see Rita. Rita is the veteran of the team. And earlier when I talked to her, she said, we do everything together, me and my daughter, Wiley. And you know what? They do do everything together. They qualified back into the American semis, top 30, same night. This horse as well, one of the neatest stories is this horse is also a standout breakaway horse. A lot of times you wouldn't put those two disciplines together, being a breakaway horse and a barrel horse, but this is the exception. When her good horse got hurt, her young daughter stepped up, Wiley, and said, Mom, use my breakaway horse, and look at there. Well, that you know, Anthony, you talk about these horses getting used at more than one event, I think it's huge for them. You know, I've tried to convince Haley, I know Haley Kinzel as well, to let us, you know, try to steer wrestle on Sister and see how that's gonna go. I bet that would go beautifully. She would darn sure get by the steer and allow you to set your feet. Let's see what Rita and Smoking Gold 2, a.k.a. Gus, can do on this night. You saw the great run by Riley. Is she going to rise to the occasion and use that momentum? A little slip around number two. What can she do on number three? It's a 13.918 to get into the top 10. And she does it here in a big way. Rita Cheney, 13.7. She'll be happy with that, setting number four, Anthony. Yeah, and she smokes the pattern. She even came off of that third barrel. That can be tightened up 
as she moves forward, hopefully into Friday's competition. You saw her bow off that third barrel, but sometimes these horses have different styles. It's easy for me to say that they gotta be as tight as they can be, but when it comes down to it, these riders know their horse's styles, and if they need a little bit more room around those barrels to be able to accelerate and finish the course, then that's what they're gonna do. Cheney, can you say cha-ching? because she might be that much closer to that 2.1 million right now. With that time, Cheney sitting good, number four overall in the barrels. Halfway through night number two of the semifinals right here at the American Rodeo inside Cowtown Coliseum. We were sliding, the barrels were dropping, but for some, like Rita Cheney, they stayed up just like they needed to. classic event inside the most iconic indoor arena you can find in Western sports. Saddle Bronc riding brought to you by Resist All. Now more contenders have won in this event than any other format. Four times it's been a Saddle Bronc rider to get their share of a million. Will Pollock hopes to join those four. Yeah, he's on Rivington of Andrews here. Good horse and there were some bobbles in that ride. You know, they're like pretty good ride, but for where you're trying to get, they're gonna they're gonna knock you on this one. Stalls right there, goes ahead, spurs him out, everything starts good right here, and then things get uneven. One leg hangs in the candle of jump. You know, he keeps trying to finish, keeps trying to finish, but at this point, that's probably not gonna be enough. Yeah, it's 81 and a half. You gotta be in the top 12 in rough stock to advance to Thursday. It's their own semifinal before you get to that contender round on Friday night. Right now for Pollock, that setting number 11 of overall, so just above that cut line. Cable Wareham. I'm loving seeing all these young guys show up in the rough stock event to throw their hat in there and, and see if they got what it takes yet. You know, this kid was the 2020 high school national finals champion, so he's got what it takes. But like you said, you put him up against the Stetson Wrights, you know, the, the top guns, they're going to have to bring their A game and more to compete with them. Well, yeah, but you don't know what you don't know, right? Until you get there and see, hey, okay, now I got to get snappier at this. I got to get stronger here. But I, I really admire that they're, they're stepping out there and trying it on. Wear him with that ride on buckle up 75, excuse me, 74 and a half. So 23rd overall, we won't be seeing him on Thursday, but a guy we could very well see, Colby Wanchuk, and he's aboard Fire Lane. This is a great matchup right here. Should kind of angle around the left, old Fire Lane, been around a long time. And Colby Wanchuk, this, this guy rides really, really good. And currently number five in the world standings. For Red Hot, Fort Worth, placed four there. It, six out of his last seven he's rode in any rough stock event. Pretty good averages we're seeing from this kid. Yeah, and look, once you get the Blanc ride figured out at a high level like, like Colby has, you don't right. hit the ground that That's often. That's true. You know, it, it's, it's an event that, but I tell you, getting to this point of where he's at, you take some really bad crashes. And you talk about the momentum. Had a great run ride over there at San Antonio, got some money. Went. Let that momentum carry in. You know he can compete against the top guys. He is one of the top guys. So, you know, coming into this, this should be just a, a walk in the park for him. And he rode his last seven. He just placed in six of the last seven rounds. Yeah, look at that, though. Look, look at the way he handles his rein, sets his feet all the way to his candle. That's why it's called the classic event hey, right there. Hey, Stroll down hey, Central Park right there for him. Sweet. That's Watch what it's supposed to look like, where, where everybody sitting at home says, yep, that's exactly how I would do it. He wants it, and he wants it in a big way. 87 points, that slides him into the number two spot overall. Wanchuk, looking good to move on to Thursday. Yeah, looking great right there. Well, for Wanchuk, he'll be sitting on the sidelines to watch the rest of the contenders right here tonight in the Saddle Bronc and tomorrow. But the smile says it all. He's breathing a little bit easier after that one. Yeah, he's not, he's not even breathing hard at all. <laughs> Will Reynolds out the gate. 
You know, Jess, we talk about the mark out, how important it is to get your timing with these horses. Right there, it didn't look like when he left the shoot, he had any mark out, any type of timing to get with that horse. No, and this one, we'll, we'll watch it back, but this one kind of rolls around the post there. Let's watch this back. See how he rolls around that post like that? It's kind of a tough shot at him. But you're right, starts behind, and, and then it's hard to ever catch back up. And, it's just, it's just kind of a fist fight all the way through here. Finding that power to take away from the horse with your feet and your rein, he just couldn't find that sweet spot. 74 and a half. Not as high as he was needing or wanting to be right here. Saddle Bronc riding, and we saw it last night, something about watching this inside of an arena like this. I mean, over a hundred years ago, they started having rodeos here, and to think now going for a couple million dollars in the same events. Well, yeah, this is this is the original event, you know? This is this is kind of where it all started, and uh, so to see, hey, I talk about the history in this building. I've seen Jose Vitor Lemmy before the show started, and that's what he was saying, how cool it was to be in here because of of all the history of this building. Well, the legends of Rodeo Past that all competed in here and to be able to put your name in that hat with them is, is incredible. Great matchup right here. This Tanner Butner's really riding good, and he's got a great, great horse right here in his fifth and Andrews. Butner says, you got to believe he's been to the American before. Oh. He was going for it. Horsepower didn't finish quite as strong as he was probably hoping there. No, maybe just a little bit weak. Um, yeah, like he's, he makes a good ride. The horse wants to be good, but might have just been a little bit too soft. You know, we haven't seen a re-ride yet. And I thought the bareback ride there could have been one. And what do you think about here? Into the ride, horse quick kicking, yeah. quick jumping. Doesn't kick one time. Then follows it up with the kick. It's a good thing we're not judging. Well, that's that's for <laughs> sure. But you know, in '84, look, that's a pretty good ride and, and a chance of getting him out of here, Kate, out of this round into that next one. And it was Butner who made that happen because he was three points above that horse. Riggin was fired up to have this one right here. This big. Big long main stud. That's what a frog's supposed to look like. What a great ride, too. I mean, timing was amazing right there. Lifting on his ring, charging with his feet. Great ride, Regan. Yeah, big scores coming in for it too. And that's what you know when you talk to these guys before the event, and you just kind of see a little fire in their eye because they know the matchup that they got. That's the way Regan Smith was coming into this thing. Smith and Catwalk team up here in a big way. 86 points, that's gonna set him number eight overall. Again, it's the top 12 in all the rough stock events that come back to Thursday night. And right now it's gonna take an 83 to get into that top 12. Yeah, and it's just gonna keep getting tougher, you know, because the, the horsepower's been good and the guys just keep getting better and better. We, Said it at the top, and I'll say it again, these contenders are for real this year. Gus Gilliard hopes to have something to say about that. 19 years old, making a run. Will it be enough? It's starting off strong. Can it finish just as good? He hears the whistle. What about that one for Gilliard? Hey, man, and another young Australian. We've been seeing a lot of these young Australian guys that ride Bronx really, really good. I think back to Scott Johnson back in, in, in my day, and as good a Bronx riders, and one of the best that I got to watch for a long time. And, and I guarantee you, he's had a big impression on these young guys. And man, they're riding good. Gillier goes for it. That 85 will slide him into number five overall. How about number five for Gallier? It's good riding. Right? And you look, the horses that they're having a lot of success on are these horses that are straight down the pin. They got good timing, good kick all the way but they're not having to worry about coming off of that fence. Well, it's letting those guys set their feet, lift on that rein, not, like you said, getting to the fence and jumping, bobbing, weaving out there. That was a great horse. We've already seen tonight from Gillard, 85, and then Smith, 86, Wanchuk, 87. Similar to the bareback, it seems that the horsepower, the, the talent of the riders, just a, another level right here. 
Yeah, and, and it's going to go to another level when the invitees get here. When, when you start seeing Stetson ride or ride, uh, you know, these guys, it's, it's going to get stepped up another notch. Little sister of Frontiers. Little moves right there. And, you know, that's, that's why it's so important to be under your reign and lifting on it. That's, I got to do a, a school a few years ago with legendary Rick Smith and, and learned so much about the Bronx ride, listening to him talk to these guys. And if you're not lifting on that rein, you've got no shot. Well, it almost seemed like that horse felt, hey, I got him out of position, kind of gave a little move right there. That's no different than the bull riding. These animals are smart. They know where they can get away and get these guys on the ground. Little sister got the best of Ballard. No score there. Ben Anderson next. Let's send it to Anthony. Ben Anderson is one of the most prolific and exciting riders that we have seen in a long time. Another great Canadian bronc rider. It's hard to say Canadian bronc rider without mentioning the name Roddy Hay, the legend, the Hall of Famer that he is. Ben Anderson learned from that man and now hopes to achieve the same things that Roddy Hay did. Every single time, whether he gets a ride or no ride, he's smiling. And gentlemen, he just saw another reason to smile. Yeah, big, strong. Bell Star there, really moving out across there. That's a good job of hustling the entire eight seconds because if you get behind on this big long gray right here, you're going to be in for it. Really a good job of, of staying aggressive the entire ride. Anderson able to get it done. That 84 and a half is going to put him in the number eight spot overall. You have to be at 83 and a half right now to make the cut line. To be winning it, you have to be above an 88. You know, and they're piled up, those scores. And like I said, we got one more night of this, Justin. I'm excited to see what it is going to take. Yeah, for sure. Look, look. I mean, it keeps getting tougher and tougher. The bar just keeps getting raised. Chance Barris aboard Big Shot, the two teaming up here. And, th and this one here, you guys, I mean, everybody, it's real easy to see the difference between what you just seen in, in Ben Anderson and, and this right here. You know, like, he's going through those motions. He's, he's swinging his feet up there at him, but you watch it, his toes are, are north and south instead of east and west. He's not ever getting them set, and that just allows that horse to get longer and longer and him to get further behind. And because of that, rider score lower than the horse, 67 and a half. Not what Barris wanted, but we're talking about these young guys getting in for shots against guys like a Colby Wanchuk, who has that 87. And Wanchuk, who we mentioned, setting number two overall, did just what he needed to right here in the Saddle Bronx. Yeah, he, he had a great horse, took advantage of it, made a great ride. And that's what he does a lot like this next kid. Sage Newman aboard Trophy Wife. He's been to the American before. It happened just a season ago in 2021. He went all the way to the shootout round, but then he bucked off. Doesn't want that same result here. Newman knows what he has to do. You and can't do it a lot better than that right there. That's oh, and another great ride. Yeah, and you watch the start. Yes. Watch the start that this kid has. Sage Newman. No trophy wife want to wear rare out of there a little bit, and he just whack. And then it's every jump. And the difference between his ride and last, those toes are turned out, those feet set, let those front, the horse's front feet hit the ground, then they come back to the camel. No days off for Newman. That one goes to the lead, 88 and a half. 43 for the horse, 45 and a half that rider score. Newman needed it, Newman does it. Yeah, that, that's big time stuff, 45 and a half rider score. That's, that's a great, great job. That now sets the bar. 88 and a half if you want to be setting number one. There's still one more night before that contender round. Shorty Garrett aboard Hair Trigger. Yeah, really good wrong here. Andrews, really nice. Shorty Garrett, this is a guy, Luke, that I've been so impressed watching his young career because he just keeps getting better and better every year I watch him. And it shows right here. That horse wasn't straight down the pin, giving him just a great go. That horse circled back to get those feet in the same time when they're circling back to left. That's got to be tough. It is unless you ride like this. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the thing. These guys, these top-end guys, they're so aggressive. They're so ahead of everything. 
86 and a half for Shorty Garrett. That puts him four overall. You will be seeing him come back tomorrow. Top 12 coming back tomorrow in the rough stock. They're going to get one more to move on to that contender round Friday night. Last guy to go, Logan Cook. He has to be an 84 and a half. That's what gets him back to tomorrow. Well, you, you know what you got to be. You got a good bronc here in Hillbilly Rock, a championship pro rodeo. And hey, the table set. That's all you can ask for is, is a shot. And, and he's got a really good one right here. has watched his competitors go. He knows what he has to do. 84 and a half is what he needs. Can Cook get it here? He makes the whistle, hey, hey, but will hey. it be enough? No, I don't think it will. I mean, we'll wait for the judges to see, but it's into the wall, and, and it's so hard with the angle of this wall to, to be able to keep that circle going. They got to change leads, come off of it the other way, and Luke, we might get our first option, though. Yeah, you know, exactly right. Watching that horse leave long in the angles, like you said, he didn't have anywhere to go. Once he hit that fence, he had to change those leads. Yeah, for Cook, this works out for him. Option of that rewrite, the rider score was there, but the horse was 32 and a half, so we will be seeing more of Cook. But who is setting great right now? Sage Newman, 88 and a half. Newman sails to the top of the leaderboard. We will see him again tomorrow night. And Newman standing by with Anthony. It takes two to tango. Trophy wife was the horse that you had tonight. And I asked you moments ago if you'd ever been on that horse before. And what was your answer? Uh, no, sir. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Um, probably older than me. Really good horse but not quite as old as your mustache. But either way, here's the thing. Last year, we watched Sage Newman do, go all the way to the shootout round, and that actually lit a fire in you because it didn't end up the way that you'd wanted. Uh, yes, sir. I didn't finish like I wanted to, but I'm going to be back there this year. Going back this year, that put a fire underneath you, qualified to the National Finals Rodeo. How much you've, have you matured over the last year since it has been, since that defeat? Oh, I feel like I matured a bunch. Getting to go to the finals and um, hanging around all these guys, um, I feel good and he is going to invoke the power of the stash in 2022. Could it be a $2 million razor that he buys next? Newman, one step closer. But for Speed Williams, he has won it all everywhere and at every level of rodeo. But right here, the eight-time world champ will start his campaign to change that next. $2 million in one event to win more money in one or two days than it took me a career to win. It is a fairy tale for my kids to have this opportunity. Welcome back inside of the historic Cowtown Coliseum. The true team event, the only team event in professional rodeo is coming up next, the team roping competition. This is an event filled with more variables than any other event. Five different minds have to be working together in order for the fast times that we hope to see. Two cowboys, two horses, and one bovine that doesn't care how many gold buckles or how many trips you have to the NFR. All they care about is trying to escape the loops and only time will tell how successful the team ropers will be on this night. It's only the fastest six that will advance that contender round and the team roping brought to you by Smarty. We are going to get it started with Leander Williams and Justin Elms. We've already seen a night of semis. It's Egeskiza and Graves that are sitting at the top with that 3-5-8. But it's the overall, it's the aggregate that matters most. This team bringing in 10 and 72 on two. Yeah, and we only had two clean runs last night. We'll see what happens right here. Oh, uh, what a reach, too. You talk about Speed Williams in the building. These kids would be throwing some yeah, ropes. They're trying right. to impress them. How, how long are these head ropes again? <laughs> Extra long. Gets around the neck on the switch. Man, he'll be wanting that one back. It's going to be a no time for Williams and Elms. You know, and we've seen it last night again. Two clean runs. These guys are going for it because with this aggregate coming in, if they're a little bit longer, they know they got to get the barrier and get it on them fast. But like Anthony said, they get off, miss the barrier, and they get to the wall, it's hard to get a clean run at them. Stratton Lopez, Dalton Walker cleans it up. Two feet clean there. Flag comes down at 5 and 58. 
55 and 58. That slides them right now, guys. Number three overall, they're well within the top six to come back on Friday. And this, I mean, this is one of the easiest looking, smartest runs that I've seen, Luke. I mean, nails the barrier, rides up there, sticks it on him, spins him off good for his man. He just cleans it up and they shut it down. You know, talking about the luck of the draw, that steer, left sharp, didn't quite run as hard, very user friendly for him. Expect Brooks to Hosey and Dustin Harris to really go for it here. 11 and 91 on two, couple swings, reaches out around the neck. A couple more swings he wanted to take and left with nothing in it. It's gonna be a no time for DeHosey and Harris. DeHosey and Harris have to wait until next year. But the guy we've been highlighting, 15 NFR qualifier, 15 times, eight time world champion, Speed Williams is back in the building. What can he do? He's teaming up with Colton Johnson here. Yeah, hey Anthony, what's it like down there with Speed in the building, these young kids, you know, watching probably somebody they looked up to for so long? I'm gonna tell you what, the air changed when Speed Williams rode into the box because people know what he is capable of. Some of the fastest runs that we've ever seen of our generation were made by Speed Williams. And now, with eight gold buckles to his credit, the knowledge, the wisdom, all the runs that he's made, and actually, he's been practicing for this moment with his young son, Gabe. They've been coming over every weekend. Now he's partnered up with Colton Johnson, who truly is one of the best in the land, and Speed was out and spun one for first. But we talk about how fast these healers are throwing. Yeah, absolutely, he did his part. Colton Johnson almost threw too fast. If there's, if that's such a thing, when you're not in position, you're not ready to throw, but you throw that fast. If you watch this replay, Speed did what he's done for years. But Colton didn't drive far enough down the arena. His horse wasn't in position to be squared off to that run. He tried to pull off a shot, is what they say. And the steer lets up just a little bit, no time. Speed sends it sailing. So fun to watch. Colton is going to want that one back. Bubba Buckaloo, Joseph Harrison going down the arena, turns it here. How quick can you be on the heel in? Took a while for that flag to come down. 6.75. But man, was Harrison going for it there. You know, and this is such a great team. Bubba misses the barrier a little bit. Horse wants to kind of take a step. He has to pick him back up right there. Gets into the wall, but Joseph Harrison, in my opinion, is probably one of the baddest cats going. And it doesn't matter what you put him on, he'll heal him on a donkey. As my old buddy Ross Coleman would say, Joseph Harrison ain't no Tuesday. 6.54 Buckaloo and Harrison. Here's what saves them. They came in in the number one spot with that time a bit longer. Right now, setting number three overall in the aggregate. Riley Kittle, Wit Kitchens. They've seen a lot of missed opportunities, late barriers. Can it be clean? Can it be sound here? Goes for the reach, misses that far horn. No time for Kittle and Kitchens. Yeah, and see right here, gates open, scores good, misses the barrier, but lets that steer get out front of him. Doesn't follow through with his hand, doesn't get his tip over the top of that steer's, you know, level with those steer's horns, and just hits that one horn and could fish it onto a half head even. Yeah, and you can see right there in the replay, Justin just kind of let it go a little too soon. Man, it, it, an inch, you know? <laughs> it just inches the difference in a great shot and missing one. Inch makes a difference, especially on that start. You know, makes a big difference. Sunshine Buges, Ty Arnold, you have to be 5.1 or less right here for this team to get in the top six. That is the marker. Oh, that rope goes around, gets the front leg. No way you could fish that one on. No time here for Buges and Arnold. Yeah, you know, tough luck right there. They knew they had to be fast. And Anthony, you can see it down there. What's going through these guys' minds not getting those clean runs? The hardest thing for any of these team ropers to do, you watch Bubba Buckaloo and Joseph Harrison, they had about a two second lead on the field. They knew they needed to stop the clock. But some of these teams, just like you just watched Sunshine and Ty, they were behind the eight ball. They were long. They had to be some sort of a three or four second run. Brock Hansen, Clay Futrell, this could be something special. And it is. All they needed to be was a 9.24. 0.03 their time here. It's going to give them that third spot overall. And let's 
And let's watch this head loop. You want to talk about tight, slick to the horns. From that steer's horns right here, tight, right to the dally horn, tight. Steer hops off, perfect. Great shot by his healer. That was a huge run. Hanson Futrell have to be feeling good. What a loop right there on the heel end. Gets that quick flag too. They're sitting number third overall. Kasten Peavy, Shane Edmondson just saw quite a run. Are they going to be able to move that leaderboard in any way? Fastest so far on three, a 12 and 37. Don't see this team beating that. They're coming in with a 10 and change on two, but they got to be quick. 7.58 or less would have been the time to get them back. But unfortunately, it's going to be a no time here for PV and Edmondson. Yeah, and a great head shot right here. Gets that barrier right around his horse's chest, but watch that steer whip right there at the end. That's hard for any healer well, to take Well, and he wanted to shot. take his shot there, and then it wasn't there, so he had to try it. Yeah, that thing just got out of whack. Just two teams to go as we go to a team that has the experience. Garrett Tanazi, TJ Watts. This team has to be a 9.57 to get to the top six. You know, and Garrett Tanazi in these little buildings can be as dangerous as anybody. Go to these WCRA events in those little buildings, he has won a pile. See him right there, great horsepower, great shot. I think we got a leg. And Watts knew it right away too. They would have been setting with a four and 44. 9 and 44 right now. I got some. That puts them on the cut line, but oh, that's going to be tough to see if that stays. 12 and 37 is the fastest we've seen so far on three. Tanazi Watts, they just slid into that number three spot. But again, we've got another day of team roping left, and you got to stay within that top six. Just one team left to go. Cinch Moody, Caden Profili here. You know, we see a lot of these Cowboys multi-event. Multi -event. Cinch Moody won the 12 and under tie down rope with the 2015 Roy Coopers. That's pretty impressive. Then he comes back over here on the head and side. A clean run is really all they needed. And a clean run is exactly what Cinch and Caden got. No, I spoke too soon. It was clean in the field. It was not clean at the barrier. Would have been a 496. They're just telling a speeding ticket here. They only had to be clean to be setting good. 1496 puts them out. Yeah, and you can see that steer's head. When he went, nodded, that steer's head was up in the chute. Steer, gate open, steer has to put his head down. So always want to make sure those steers are right to the front, looking straight forward. That way you can get the cleanest start possible. Night number two of the team roping semifinals in the books. The best we saw tonight, it was Hanson and Futrell getting it done to sit number three. That's how you do a clean. That's how you clean it up. Hanson, Futrell setting good for that contender round Friday night. It's the Cavender's ride of the round and Sage Newman Nailed it right here on Trophy Wife, 88 and a half. Yeah, had a bronc that he's been wanting to get on for a long time. Finally got to and made just a flawless ride from start to finish. You want to be a bronc rider, that's how you do it. No days off for Newman. He'll be coming back for another one tomorrow night. Feel good about that one, Sage. Two events left to go. It's the fastest one you'll see all night. We're talking how fast to get to a million. Less than 10 seconds total could get these ladies 2.1 million. It's a breakaway roping presented by Cactus Saddlery. Grab your popcorn because this was some fun watching last night. Yeah, in my opinion, it was the best event of the night. These girls were getting the start, getting it on. Sorry, sorry. I mean, bull ride was good too, but these <laughs> girls were getting it on. It was I mean, awesome, man. Great starts, great runs, very impressive. And we've seen it. You know, Caden Crawford, she was showing them how to get it done last night. Taylor Felton, she is our first woman to watch right here. What a start. Oh. A little tough luck right there, you know, and obviously she's bumped. Had a good chance right there. Got out of the barrier. We watch thought that was. Oh, no. Nope, yeah, she just break it. broke it. And her horse kind of got a little short on her right Ooh. there, too. Felton, it's a 12 and 29 with that barrier. No luck for Felton here. Sammy Taylor hopes to turn that around. Similar to what we saw last night, the bar was set quickly. 
If that happens again, expect a lot of those barriers to be pushed. Sammy Taylor, if she could get out clean here. There's the nod. Great start. Couple swings, pops right off. That's some range. <laughs> some range right there. And look how sharp that loop was. I mean, that curl came around and snapped down tight. We're going to get a great view here. Good start. Look at her throw it right there. Coming across the mouth of the box and let that calf have it. 2.16 for Taylor. That slides her into the number four spot overall. Let's send it to Anthony. You're about to watch the first of two sisters, Sarah Angeloni. You'll watch her older sister, Martha, a little bit later. Both originally from Virginia, moved to Texas to pursue their roping dreams. Not only can they break away rope, but they can team rope as well. They've won the U.S. All-Girl Championships. But Sarah, in 2016, was the national high school champion. Knows what it takes to be fast, but does she have the right calf? That was going to be the difference maker, the separation from the calf to the horse. Get that rope broke away from the saddle horn until the time stops. Well, and you see it right there. The last girl to go, Sammy Taylor, that calf was getting away from her right here. Watch her get the rope on. This calf slows up just a little bit. That's just that much more time to get that rope broke off the saddle horn. For Angeloni, 2.6. Now in the breakaway, it's going to be the top three that advance to the contender round. Purely on the number of entries alone, you've got more advancing and breakaway and barrels as we go to Kayleen Helton. No time here for Helton. Yeah, and again, this, you're watching these girls back in the box and just seeing some two girls rope them fast. Now, is that getting in your head? Okay, now I need to do what they do. No, you stick to your game plan. Which is go fast. Go fast. <laughs> And fast is what they did last night. You're just seeing the standings there. Cadence Crawford, two of the best times we've seen all week long. She is back two times. You know that Bailey Lester was studying the start that she had. Wants to repeat that same luck here. This calf's kind of fighting the shoot right there. She can make sure that calf does pick his head up. Just couldn't get that loop over that calf's neck right there, and I believe she got a great start too, Justin. Yeah, it looks like she nails it here. And, you know, you can tell that calf's gonna leave and go somewhere. And so, man, she takes her go at him and comes up empty. Lester, two swings and threw it. Unfortunately, under the neck, it's gonna be a no time for Lester. Now, Bailey Goober is having quite a year at 19 years old. Currently, number 11 in the world standings. Just a couple years ago in high school, wins a Texas breakaway rope. Oh. You know how tough that is. Way to fish it on right there. Man. Wow, roped him around the ears and was patient. And that's that's knowing your business right there. That's amazing to me, because she's still, what, she's 268? And that's happened to, how fast was she gonna be? Oh, exactly. You know, she had to have that feeling. When it left her hand, she's like, oh, I'm not quite there. I'm not gonna pull my slack. Let it sit. Boom. Good fortune for Goober. Knows how to get it done. That 2.68 puts her number seven overall. Shelby Rose next to go. Rose trying to get her horse situated just perfect right there in the back of the box. There's the nod. One swing, two. Bit late right there. Horse pin his ears. Ah, oh, just under the nose. No time. Yeah. here for Rose. You know, on that horse kind of balked a little bit when the gates opened and just made her behind. And, you know, in this run, you can't do that. We saw one of the Angeloni sisters go earlier. And now as Martha's getting ready, we'll send it to Anthony. Yeah, Martha Angeloni in this building, she holds the arena record at 1.4 seconds. Now, that wasn't a sanctioned event. That's an open rodeo. However, she has a calf that on two different occasions in the preliminary rounds, they have been two or faster. This could be absolutely something good, but unfortunately, you guys saw it. She leaves too soon. From a 195, it goes to an 1195, and that is absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah, but you know, we talk about the chances you have to take. Give yourself the opportunity to run at that. You know, she was coming in 20th, 5.14 in the aggregate. See her kind of pick up on her horse. She knew she got off the corner a little too soon. Picked up on her horse, just wasn't quite enough. That calf didn't just squirt out through there like some of them other ones. Angeloni outside of the top 10. Just three left to go as we move now to Jordan Joe Hollibaugh. Deep breath, getting set for that calf. Wanting that calf being just the perfect position. 
so close on time with everything here. You got to make sure it's technically sound, ready to go. You could see the focus for Hollabaugh. Yeah, coming in first place right now on the aggregate time. She's just going to take care of her business like she does everywhere she goes. One Cheyenne, she gets out of the barrier. Oh, oh. wow. You know, I think she broke the barrier too right there. And that's how these girls go. They live and die by the sword. You've got to be as fast as you can. And that's what uh, Jordan Joe does. Halba wanted to have it here. What a disappointment for her coming in in that number one spot. Needed a, a clean, smooth run, would have done it. No luck for Hollabaugh. You saw the American champ at the top of the show. What she wanted before is for 100,000. Madison Uthier, clean run here, gets her one step closer to going for that 2.1 million. At 19 years old, couple swings out. Oh, man. Madison misses. And she rocks yeah. the barrier. Just some tough luck. You see right here, great start. That calf was that getting split the her. gates running, huh? Yes, he did. And then horse was just a little short. You can see her as she was throwing. Horse was sitting down. One more stride might have helped up. But talk about disappointed. Madison knows that she'd like to have that one back. And she knows how successful she is when she makes it to AT&T. Much more of Madison that will be seen. Michaela Mack came in. 4.23 on two. Mac must be smooth. Got the nod, two swings. Mac, no time here. You can't come back on two. It takes all three to make it back. We won't see be seen more of Mac. Well, that's going to wrap up our breakaway roping. No one was able to outlast Cadence Crawford or Caitlin Hooper, and Crawford standing by with Anthony. Well, the young lady that was inspired by Madison Uthier, we won't unfortunately see her moving on, but we will see this young lady, Cadence Crawford. Last night, you made it look easy. Talk about the confidence that you're showing at just 17 years old. Man, I honestly don't even know. I back in the box and I nod my head and I make it one run at a time and that's the only thing that I can do. Listen, man, breakaway roping is easy, but when you have your stepmom and your dad, Charlie Crawford, Jackie Crawford, constantly building you up and training you to be a champion, that's got to give you some added confidence when you back in there. I have one of the best support systems and I'm so very blessed for that. They have been so great through this whole journey and I'm excited to compete against Jackie on Friday. There you have it, the challenge, and the line has been drawn. Cadence and Jackie, two croppers going head to head. I think I ever won that much money in just one weekend. And I'm so excited for that, and I hope I can do a great job and maybe win that money and that buckle. Welcome back. It was a bit of business to take care of in the saddle bronc riding. We'll get you there. But right now, two-time PBR champ Jose Vitor Lemmy, no stranger to the winner's circle at AT&T Stadium, won his first world title inside that building. Success here in Cowtown Coliseum could send him there once again. In the saddle bronc riding, it was Logan Cook, who was awarded a re-ride. That horse he had, Push Pop, just saw it here inside the arena. Yeah, things just get a little out of whack right here. Just kind of short strokes out of him. Gets into the wall, finishes him pretty good off of that wall, but you know, just a few little bobbles in there and not gonna be enough points. At 76 points for Cook, that will end his journey to AT&T. As we move now to the final event of the night, it's bull riding brought to you by Acrisure, and it's gonna be Cody Jesus knocking his head. Here we go. Big, strong bull right here. Oh. Cody comes down in just 2.39. Yeah, best to Joe, this is a big, strong bull. I seen him at the Extreme Bulls uh, in Fort Worth a few weeks ago, and, and Trey Kimsey made a really good ride on him, but he's the kind you can't worry so much about a direction. You've got to ride the up and down on that bull, because if you get a little, little out of shape, he's so strong, he's going to bring you down. If you want momentum coming into the American, look no further than this hot shot from PBR. Bob Mitchell, 14th right now in the PBR World Standings. He's already 
had so many exclamation points this season. What about doing it here? Hey, last week at in L.A. at uh, the new Crypto Arena, I, I, this guy walked in. I'm like, hey, we got another Bulldogger. This is a big kid. But <laughs> talk about made a stud ride in the long round. I was very impressed with this young 19-year-old kid. Yeah, 19 years old, big and strong. Look, he's having a great rookie campaign so far. He's aboard Rapid Flyer, let it fly. Bob Mitchell comes down 4.50. As we watch this back, Malacor just gets him pulled down a little bit top heavy night to the outside. And, you know, if we'll get you in that shape, it's really, really hard to recover from. You know, I talk about upper body position. I know if I was on the bull, my belly would carry over. That's an athletic guy, big guy. But I mean, should he let it? He shouldn't let his body get in that position right there. Well, no, you can't either. You know, that that's the thing. It's, it's something that you can't do because as soon as it happens, then it's over. It's the top 12 that are going to come back here in the bull riding tomorrow night for one more shot to go for that contender round. Cody Teal hopes to be there for it, away from his hand here. Teal staying with him, setting up. Can he keep center, make that whistle? Teal, just what he does, and does it when it means a lot right here. What will that score be? Look, that's a fantastic job of getting by that one. Not many guys can, can keep making the adjustments that Teal makes throughout the course of that eight seconds. And awarded 86 points for that one, setting number three overall. And he could breathe a little bit easier after that. Well, and look, you said that's just what Cody Teal does. And it really is. This is a guy, you go back to 2012, he's the PRCA world champ, Luke. Comes over to the PBR. And this is a guy, he's so easy to cheer for. You never hear him complain. You never hear him make an excuse. He just shows up, goes to work day in, day out. Ezekiel Mitchell comes down right out of the gate, 1.22. Where did it go wrong here? Uh, early. I'm going with early, Kate, it's where it went wrong. Bull turns out of there, big kick. Zeke's head's up, rope, a hand pops out of his rope. That's a really good bull, red jacket of Andrews. They haven't had an answer for that one. Yeah, red jacket just took down Ezekiel Mitchell. Trey Kimsey. The border bull just with a number right now, 32L from Andrews Rodeo. Currently setting number five in the PRCA World Standings. Yeah, Trey's had a really good start to his year. I had already mentioned him at the Extreme Bulls earlier, seeing so him make a really good ride there. And, and look, this is a good draw, I feel like, for Trey. This bull had been as many as 88 on this bull. I was looking up his stats earlier today, and uh, good chance for him. And look, it's gonna take it's gonna take a pretty decent score to get you in in that 12 round to give you a shot to advance. Well, he's no stranger to championships in his family. I mean, Sage is older brother. This kid, he's not quite where Sage is, but he is getting close to it, is he not? Well, yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing. You don't want to, somebody that casts as big a shadow as, as your older brother Sage, you got to find your own way. Take the great things from him and build off of that. Kimsey looks right, goes left, stays with him. Back the other direction. Just what he needs to do through the whistle. Lands almost on his feet. Kimsey should like that one here. Yeah, really good job right here, too, of just tracking one around. Look, there's a, just because you see a bull 50 times and 50 times he's one jumping around to the right, they can do this, a big look that away, and then gets too close, takes off, and you got to be able to track them around and stay focused for that long. I thought Trey did a fantastic job. Riding jump for jump instead of just anticipating the move from. Absolutely. It's an 80 and a half for Kimsey. Puts him 16th overall. Not going to be enough to come back. You got to be top 12 to get one more tomorrow. But maybe Laramie Mosley can make that happen. We've already had a couple days of bull riding between the slack and last night's performance. Dinner are both on top, 88 and a half, but Chase Outlaw, what a standout ride we saw just 24 hours ago inside this arena. Yeah, Outlaw kind of stole the show last night. Hey, this is a, this is a really good bull, 35 boy. They've marked it 45 plus eight a lot of times. Strong right out of the gate. What a ride for Mosley, can he make it? He says, yes I can, on his feet. What about that, Larry Mosley? Great ride right here. 
You know, and look, for, for some of these games you talk about, we've already mentioned Sage Kimsey. You know, and all the world titles he's got. Jose Vitor Lemmy, these, these larger than life guys. And as a bull rider, though, you can't worry about that. You got to show up, ride the bull that you've drawn on any given night. And Laramie, big time scores, Kate. Yeah, Mosley makes it work for 88 points. That slides him into the number two spot overall. Well, Mason Taylor is a guy that started off the season so hot in the PBR and the heat up right now, what that can do for the young guy. And watching this guy at the PBR finals last year, had his mouth wired shut or jaw wired oh, shut. Man. So impressive. And now he's back at him healthy and feeling good. Yeah, and look, Mason rides really good on bulls that go either direction. Struggles a little bit with bulls going to the right, but does a good job tonight. Steps off on his feet, walking the park. Taylor takes that one straight to the pay window. Just a little wink there to the crowd after to say, I did it. I think he was winking points. at Luke. I'm sure he was. It's yeah. the jeans. Yeah, good ride right here. Good little bull. Round of the ride into his hand. Just right for Taylor. Taylor sitting number three to come back. Woo! Let it out, Taylor. What a ride for him. Jose Vitor Lemmy, two-time champ, waiting in the wings for his opportunity. You can watch that ride happen by tuning into the Right Pass channel, 720 on Pluto TV. Well, it's the Durango Boots wreck of the round, not from bull riding this time, but from the icon. Speed Williams does his part. What a devastating miss there. And then Madison Uthier wanted her shot, that 2.1 million, a shot she took here falls just short. Back to the action here in the bull riding. Dalton Castle away from his hand. Stay up. Abort Twizzler. Yeah, and I can't, I can't wait to watch this one back in its entirety right here, because Dalton Castle has a unique ability to never be in bad shape on the back of a bull, no matter what's going on. This guy's body awareness and balance is second to none. He's He's got as much natural balance as anybody I've ever seen. 85 and a half for Castle. It's a top 12 coming back tomorrow. Castle sitting number six overall right here. For everyone watching on Cowboy Channel, this is the time to move over to Pluto TV to see how the bull riding ends up. Make that move now, and we'll see you there. Right, 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 Derek. Need it now. Get after it. Derek Kolbaba not waiting any longer. He's a big fan of big moments. Expect a big one here into his hand. Has to stay center board. Salty dog. Oh. And goes down 5.02. Yeah, and you're gonna see you're gonna see the bull rope pop out of his hand, and, and he's still on the bull's back. And you're like, well, maybe you know his, his rope just let go of him right there. But he's putting himself in some situations where it's putting a lot of pressure on his hand. Like right there, boom! It's testing it. Next round, it pops out. Kolbaba is gonna take a no score here as we move now to one of the hottest guys in the PBR. Dalton Castle, ranked number one for a reason. He's aboard way out Willie. Well, and this is one of the toughest guys, too. A few weeks ago, Kate, okay, we seen him get his helmet stepped on. Totally just crashed his helmet out. Uh, Dalton, or Dalen Swearingen, nobody tougher. And, and look, on Bulls going to the left, nobody better. And I, I mean right up there with Jose Sage, these guys, he can do it as good as any of them and be really, really big points, too. When that bull smashed up the next week, he there came back go. and won the next event, if I'm not mistaken. You're exactly right. right. There's the nod. Swearingen has to swing for the fences here, away from his hand, out of position. Oh, hung up. Gets loose, those bullfighters stepping in as they do every time. Comes down 5.72 for Swearingen. Yeah, and, and look, this this 
speaks to two different things here. How gritty and tough Swearingen is and how much effort that he puts out, but also how he struggles with bulls going to the right. But, Kay, you mentioned the bullfighters, and they stay hooked right there and, and do a great job. Two bull riders left to go and two world champions coming up. But first, take a look at this, saving Swearingen, stepping right in front of him. You know, and sometimes it's not enough just to get his attention for that split second. Sometimes it is, but these great bullfighters, they know how long to stay there to give that guy a chance. And led by Webster right there, man, one of the best. Well, for the two guys that are left, they both know how to win $1 million. But now they've got a shot at doubling that. 2.1 million on the line. So we get set for Kaiki Pacheco. All he needs, 83 and a half. And when Pacheco rides, he is usually well over that marker. I think this is a really good opportunity for Kaiki. Wooly Bully of Andrews. This type of bull can be anywhere from 85 to 88. Pacheco, when he's when he's in his groove, nobody's nobody's better. Nobody's more focused. Nobody's more in the moment than this guy right here. Yeah, and talk about the work ethic these guys put in, you know. When I was down and staying down in Decatur going to Fitwise, these guys were there every day. Pacheco Bull, Wooly Bully here, right into his hand. What a bull, finish strong, just centered. That's total focus and total domination out of a bull rider right there. And you guys, when we watch this back, you watch his head, Luke, and, and you see where his focus remains. Chin's tucked, that takes care of everything else. It doesn't allow your upper body to get back and all the different things that can go wrong. This guy, he reminds me a lot of the legendary Jim Sharp on his ability to keep his chin tucked for the entirety of a ride. So technically sound, and that's gonna pay for Pacheco. 86 points, number five overall, so Pacheco getting another one here inside Cowtown Coliseum tomorrow night. Great job for Kaiki. And then there was one. He's been successful in AT&T. He's been successful right here inside Cowtown Coliseum. Two-time reigning world champ, Jose Vitor Lemmy. And, and here's the deal with this one. Me and Jose talked about it earlier. We both watched the videos of this bull. And this bull's a handful as far as to get by to get the eight seconds on. I don't know if he'll provide as big a points as some of the other bulls we've seen, but with Lemmy, anything's possible. All he needs is 83 and a half. Can he do it on Al Pacino? Right into the gate, takes off on him a bit. We're gonna see a re-ride no matter what, I feel like here. But he never got out of position. You said that you know, bulls be a handful. Jump for jump, he never got out of position right there. Let me rephrase that. For a lot of guys, that bull could be a handful. <laughs> 79 and a half is what we're seeing. I think we got to see a rewrite, I, I would think, because not, not just from an inferior performance, but when he turns back the other way and comes back in the chute, hits his horn right there, kicks the chutes right there. Um, I, I think that's a missed call by the judges right there. Guys, no option for a rewrite for Lemmy, even though the bull took off. It's not enough. He needed 83 and a half. Well, yeah, but he, not only did he take off, him. though, but he hits the shoots again. That's the same as a foul for a bull hipping himself. That's, that's a missed call. And you can see right there, he was trying to make his case to the judges that, hey, this bull buck back in the shoot. And he's right. That, you know, that's tough luck right there. And yeah, that's rodeo. I, Unfortunately, that is part of the Yeah, but we're right talking there. about a chance at $2 million. Agreed. $2 million. And then the bull takes off. He's just jumping and kicking it. it you know, he goes from a from an 18-pointer to a 15-pointer. I mean, and, and, you know, hitting in the shoots like that, that's that's a that's a tough call to me, man. That I don't know how you how you don't award a rewrite on this one. Lemmy right there. Does his job. Al Pacino does not. The judges don't care. 79 and a half, not enough for the two-time world champ. Well, two nights of bull riding in the books. You had to be in the top 12 to get another one tomorrow. And it was 88 for Laramie Mosley, setting number two. We'll see him again, and he's standing by with Anthony. Laramie, last season, it was a breakout year for you. It looked like you were primed and ready to qualify to your very first Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. 
but then injuries happen. But in 2022, it seems like you're back and better than ever. Yes, sir. Uh, shoot, last year, man, I never felt so good, and I felt like I was on cloud nine on top of the world. And then, then I broke my neck, you, you know, and uh, it, it set me back, and it hit me pretty hard. But shoot, staying at home and, and riding horses and everything else, I knew this is where I wanted to be. And there's there's no greater rodeo right now than this one here. So I knew I had to come back and come back strong and enter it. So I, I feel really good about it. That momentum that you had throughout the entire year until that injury happened, it started, if you think about it, in this arena when you were 87 and a half. Yes, sir, absolutely. You know, last year I, I made it back to the short round here and then went on into AT&T, and right there I knew I knew right then that I was good enough to compete with these guys and shoot my confidence skyrocketed, and it just went on from there. As a fan watching, I love the American Rodeo because it's unique. We get to see the riders of the PBR, the top riders from professional rodeo. Is there any kind of a mindset change or is there any more, is there any intimidation when you see Jose Vitor Lemmy, which self-proclaimed, and I'll even say it, one of the greatest and hottest guys going right now, but do you even think about any other riders except yourself? I ain't gonna lie to you, when he walked down the locker room, I said, you better do everything in your power to flash one up tonight because you know he's going to, and he's gonna come with the heat every time. So just to be able to, you know, go out and do your best and try to beat that guy, you know, it's tough, but you just gotta stay on and do your job. The intensity that we see from each and every one of these riders, and, and you seem call, cool, calm, cool, and collected. How do you make yourself get to that next level when you're about to nod? Man, honestly, I, I read a book on it about controlling your breathing, so I, I really don't get nervous until I crawl on them, and saving that adrenaline has, has really helped me a lot to where I don't waste my energy, and so it's all right there. You put the energy into eight seconds, and it paid off. Congratulations on a great ride. Can't wait to watch it later this week. Well, Laramie leaves it all on the line, and it pays off in a big way. What a night we just had inside Cattown Coliseum to wrap up night number two of the semifinals. Quite a few young guns who are punching their ticket forward to that contender round, hoping to still keep that $2.1 million dream alive. Great to have you back up here with us in the booth. Now, while we're saying young guns, got it done. There were some big names, some gold buckles we thought would be moving on and some disappointments as well. What do you make, Luke, of what we saw tonight? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, Speed Williams, the greatest of all times, in my opinion, sticks it on and gets a start, gets it on this. Healer just kind of over, you know, he threw too soon. He didn't let that steer get out in front of him. And, you know, unfortunately for Steve, uh, Speed, that doesn't advance. And, and then, then Madison, Madison Uthier. Yeah, yeah, Madison Uthier, you know, it's, it's so successful in at t Stadium. Horse gets a little short. Just couldn't get that rope around that calf's neck. Now, what about Jose Vitor Lemmy here? Well, this is the stinger to me. The other ones, right. you know, there was something that went wrong in the runs. This one, the guy did everything that he could possibly do right, and the judges blew a call. Lemmy had no plans of leaving Cowtown Coliseum in that way. Not the call we expected there for the two-time champ. Now, what did go well was in the saddle bronc for Ben Anderson, and he is standing by with Anthony Lucia. It's Canadian night in the rough stock. Apparently, we talked to Oren Larson earlier, obviously, in the bareback riding. He is moving on. Another great Canadian, different horse event, saddle bronc riding, moving on, Ben Anderson. We just talked about last year's NFR, your very first. Didn't go the quite the way that you had hoped, but short memories, they're the ones that last. Yes, sir, Anthony. Yeah, I didn't go exactly how I hoped, but um... You know, good, th bad things sometimes are good for a guy, and uh, I wouldn't be riding here for two million if I would have been that top ten. So, opportunity presented itself, and here we are. Well, absolutely. And when it comes down to it, as we watch your ride tonight, great horses, great rides. That's what makes these moments so special. Yeah, I know it's huge out there. The horses were bucking, uh, the cowboys were rolling. You know what? Put those two things together, that equals rock and roll, right? And we've been happy with that since about the 1950s. So it's been good. It's all about rock and roll, and you're one of the happiest guys that we get to see. And it seems like your energy never really changes. How do you maintain that level of joy in your life? Well, I, Frank, we're riding bucking horses, right? Like, there's no better life. We get to travel around, meet great people, you know, do interviews with guys like you. It's <laughs> awesome, you know. And uh, the boys, heck, we go golfing every day. They're, you know, everybody's happy. It's rigs just living life, and it's awesome. It's the life of luxury, and $2 million would make that life that much more luxurious. Anderson rocking and rolling. He'll face another one tomorrow night. Tomorrow is our last night of semifinals. Everyone that moves out of there has to face the invited athletes. What's to come? 
Well, I think there's going to be a lot of great stuff to come. And, and, you know, when you see somebody like Ben Anderson, somebody that you can tell loves their job, it shows up in their work. With one night to go, so much on the line. This group knows what they have to do. What does that change? You know, it doesn't change anything for them. Like Jacob Edler said, he's running them one at a time. They're going to get into that uh, Friday perf with the invitees. These contenders are here to take care of business. Two nights of American semifinals in the books. What that really means, we are one day, one night, one step closer to that $2 million possibility inside AT&T Stadium. It took big rides, big scores, quick, quick moves. And we're sending quite a few of our athletes on for one more night, one more chance to live for that dream. Will it happen? We'll have to wait and see. Join us again tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, as the American Semifinals continues. For our entire crew, I'm Kate Harrison. Thanks for watching.